Hi everyone, I hope you're all well. Thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of our VGC 2019 Battle Series. I hope you're all well, having a great day and ready for some more VGC content on the channel. We kicked off this week with this Eveldon team and I think today is going to be the last time that we'll be playing this exact variant. And we'll mix things up going into Thursday, Friday of this week before we change to a brand new team next week which i'm really looking forward to and like i've been saying all week so far please let me know down in the comment section below what build you would like to say i put a poll up on on youtube yesterday so do check that out vote on there or leave a comment down below let me know what you'd like to see going forward a bit more fun exact builds that you would like restricted parents that you'd like to see that we haven't touched upon yet let me know in the comment section below and i will Try and feature as many of them as possible going forward and especially going into next week we'll have a brand new one. So, just to recap the team as always, we've got the Tapu Fini, the Metagross, the Veltal, Hitman on top, the Groudon and the Thunderous Therian. Now the Hitman on top's been doing alright, I don't really, I'm not really convinced about it as much as the Incineroar does perform a very nice job. The Wide God's really useful, especially in some situations, we've had a couple of occasions this week where it has come off pretty well but... On the whole part, I probably would like to see Incineroar back in that slot. And you know Incineroar is a top tier Pokemon for a reason. The U-turn there is specifically good. And I think Stu mentioned in one of our videos earlier in the week about the eject button as an option on Hitmontop. And it's definitely something I would explore going forward with the Hitmontop in this team. Especially with the restricted weathers and things like that that he did state. So, without further ado though, let's get into today's episode. And uh, hopefully it doesn't take too long to find an opponent. But like I said, tomorrow... I'll switch things up. I did mention a little bit, I think in yesterday's episode, about the jump Jumpluff maybe coming in. So we might change things up a bit there, have a bit more fun with the team as we end the week with it. It's still a core I really like, but I feel like uh, we want to just mix things up a little bit. But we've got a first opponent. As always, guys, if you do enjoy this content, make sure to leave a like on the video, do subscribe to the channel, and as always, leave your comments down below, and I will make sure to get back to you as soon as possible. But we'll jump straight into Team Preview right now. So our first opponent today is running a team of Xerneas Sheninja. Sheninja, every time you see that Pokemon. We've got the Incineroar, the Landorus, the uh, Rayquaza, and the Tapu Fini. So, kind of standard X-Ray team, but with the Sheninja tagged in there. Um, and we need to be especially careful for it, because there could be that Sock strategy going on with the Tapu Fini and the Sheninja, which would leave us a little bit in a, a bit of a bad place. But we do have the Thunderous to kind of fall back on, and I think Thunderous here is going to be something I do want to bring. Puts a lot of pressure onto the Tapu Fini, can hit the Landorus theory form with the hidden part ice along with that Rayquaza um, so it's just kind of picking apart the other Pokemon and if the Sulk strategy does come out then it does give us a little bit of a fallback there um, I think I will lead Thunderous um, maybe Veltal here could be good but then the thing is you know we need to be a bit careful because if the Xerneas comes out as a lead then things would get a little bit tricky quite quickly um, I'm thinking Veltal hit him on top in Metagross, but then I'm not really sure if that's going to be the right thing to do. It's just I want the dark typing for the Shin Ninja if we, if we don't see the Sog strategy. Um, and leaving Groudon? Is that the best call? Maybe. Let's try it. I mean, we'll go with it. I'm still not convincing myself. Really, I'm not. I'm not. But I, I don't know. I don't know. I feel like we've got to change it up a little bit for these sort of matchups because they've not gone. They've not been going swimmingly well. They've not been super consistent. We've not been getting the results that we've wanted every time. We've had some extra matches where we've we've come out okay. We've had some extra matchups where we've not come out so good. So it's good to experiment. And I think the Pokemon that we've got here are justified for the reasons that we're bringing them. We are going to see the Lazarus and the uh, Rayquaza come out as a lead for ourselves. Um, now one of the things we could do here is potentially just switch Thunderous out to hit on top. It's unlikely that we're going to see a Dragon Ascent into that slot because we are resisted and I feel like the Veltal is probably the one thing that you would want to target down here more than anything else. Um, so hit on top coming in gives us a little bit of breathing room with that fake out the next turn and we can just protect the Veltal here. There's no threat of speed control on my opponent's side of the field. I mean they could see a Dragon Dance. It's very, very rare that we'll see that but I would imagine the Rayquaza and the Landris are probably both going to want to attack here and getting this Intimidate off onto both these physical type attackers pretty huge for us here so we'll try this going into this turn one as we see the Rayquaza Mega Evolve shed its skin and turn into this ultimate dragon that it is. Um, 
I think double into the Veltal here. I think like a Rock Slide and a Dragon Ascent makes a lot of sense for my opponent here. We'll just protect though with our Veltal, avoid any damage going into this turn. So do see the Dragon Ascent into that Veltal and the Landorus go for U-Turn. And then there's going to be into the hit on top. They're going to be able to reposition a bit going into this next turn. Um, interesting to see what comes in. Maybe the Incineroar. Um, but maybe the Xerneas as well. If it is the Xerneas, it does... Yeah, put us in a little bit of an awkward position because we are going to need to try and maneuver our Metagross onto the field. And it's looking less and less likely that my opponent's got the type of Finny in the back, which we're kind of hoping that was there to activate our Misty Seed by us not bringing it ourselves. The thing is, if we don't fake out the, um, the Xerneas here, it sets up Geomancy, and the problem is doing this with our Rayquaza. And leaving the Rayquaza unchecked, it has got a free Dragon Ascent into him on top. Um... Now, do we switch in Metagross, or do we switch in Thunderous? If we switch in Thunderous, we've got a quick taunt onto the Xerneas to shut down the next turn, which might be a little bit better. Um, but the Metagross puts on a lot more offensive pressure, so I, I'd be a bit more inclined to get the Metagross in, and it can take a Dragon Ascent a little bit better than what Thunderous can. We are just going to see Withdrawn. We're going to see the uh, the Strong Winds disappear here as the Tapu Fini now hits the field, so we know that's around, which is perfect. But not so perfect because we are going to actually switch out Ari Veltal after getting the Misty Seed boost, which is kind of backfiring on us a little bit. Where we could have stayed in and just snarled and faked out the, the Xerneas, which would have probably seen us in a bit of a better shape going into this next turn. But we're not, not too worried. I mean, we're not losing the Pokemon, so we've got that on our side. We do get the fake out into the Xerneas flinch. We are probably putting a bit of pressure onto the Xerneas right now. Um, I think it's probably a good time to bring in Thunderous. I don't know if I want to Mega Evolve to avoid the Intimidate drop here, but I would imagine we're probably going to see. I just don't want to leave the Xerneas unchecked. That's the problem. So we could Mega Evolve. Uh, it's so easy for the Xerneas just to protect here, though. Um, and I could... Uh, I'm kind of tempted to Iron Head the type of Finny, because we could see a Nature's Madness into that slot. But I'm going to Mega Evolve. Just cover the Xerneas with an Iron Head here. And switch into Thunderous now, which puts on a lot of pressure on that type of Finnegan into the next turn. And if the Xerneas does stick around and protect, at least we've got the Taunt going into that slot the following turn. So here we go, Meg Mega Metagross hitting the field. It's whether or not our opponent is, plays a bit recklessly here. Yeah, we are going to see the Protect there. I'd say maybe a Nature's Madness or an Icy Wind potentially from uh, the type of Finny here. It's always tempting to go for that, but leaving Xerneas unchecked is, is, a ri is risky. It is very risky. We are going to see that Nature's Madness here into the Metagross. Uh, I would imagine the next turn we probably do see the Xerneas switch out. I'm going to go for the Giga World Havoc into the, the type of Finny. Or do we, do we see the type of Finny switch out into the Landorus for the Intimidate? I could imagine that being a thing as well. Um, so it's kind of like I want to taunt into taunt into the Xerneas and Iron Head into it at the same time. But when you look at like look at the, the bold position my opponent's got, I think the one thing that you've got at the minute is the Xerneas is definitely threatened. It's definitely shut down. So I'd say you probably want to switch that slot out more than anything else, which would make me want to go for the Giga Vault Havoc into the type of Finny and just cover that slot on the Xerneas side with an Iron Head, and I think we cover things a little bit better that way. Mm, but we're not going to see that, we're going to see the Landorus come in, and we're going to waste as he moves, and we could have taunted as well, which is the biggest annoyance. Unless we see the Xerneas switch out now. I mean, a flinch here would be huge for us. Flinch, flinch, flinch squad, come on, flinch squad. It's annoying that we're wasting our Z move. And we talked about it. We weighed up what my opponent might do here. Um, we do get the flinch, which is pretty huge for us. Um, Hidden Part Ice would probably take down the Landorus here. Um, and an Iron Head would definitely. Like, we could double up into the Landorus for sure. Uh, the Xerneas is definitely pressured now. I feel like an Iron Head into that slot would be a little bit wasteful, whereas doubling up into the Landorus would probably be the better thing. But then we've got to think, do, what do we do if the Xerneas gets set up now? Like, do we do we get away with it? I don't know if we do. Um, if we let the Xerneas get boosted up, which it quite possibly could, I just think the, the pressure that we've got here is just 
too much to allow it to not do anything. So I want to ice punch hidden part ice into the landress here. If we see the geomancy go up, I mean, fair play to my opponent, that's fine. But we are going to see it actually protect this turn. So we are going to be able to be able to remove this landress from the field. It's just whether or not our thunderous is fast. It is. So. Could have been a bit dicey, but we do get rid of the Landorus, which is nice. Um, and we'll probably see the Rayquaza come in now. Uh, but we've got the turn where we can switch in top for Thunderous. Um, get the Intimidate. And as long as the, the, the Rayquaza doesn't have Earth Power, we should be in a right position. I mean, we could potentially just taunt the Xerneas, stop it going for the Geomancy here, and then... Preserve our Metagross, which might be a little bit better, and, and go into him on top this way around. Which might be, I think, probably the smarter thing to do, to be honest. Um, because Metagross is so important to us in this matchup. We can't lose it, and I think like Earth Power coming out here could really be detrimental to us. So we do get the Taunt into the Xerneas. We're going to be able to shut down this Geomancy, and I think that's the biggest thing for us right now. Ooh, Crunch! <laughs> oh, that's the other thing. You know, at least it on top comes in, takes that pretty nicely. Does get the defensive drop um, and the Moonblast coming out, detecting that taunt um, into the top. But, it, I mean, the thing is, it gives us a free switch into Metagross now, and I think we probably take a minus one crunch from a Rayquaza. So, we've got that going for us. The, the, the Xerneas can't protect this next turn. Um, so, we can definitely bring in bring in Lan, uh, Metagross and pressure the Iron Head onto that slot. And we kind of are forcing a switch out there. Um, so I feel like what we want to do is kind of stay on top of things and probably just hidden part ice. I mean, what we could do is just go Thunderbolt into the Xerneas, catch the Finny on the switching, and bring in our Veltal because I feel like the Xerneas actually switches here to get rid of the um, get rid of the taunt for a late game sweep potentially, and the Finny comes in in that slot. We've got to see. No switch. No. Okay. Well, I mean, we're still going to be able to. And the thing is, like, what we notice here is that um, Thunderous actually outspeeds the Xerneas and the Rayquaza, which is nice. We're going to see it doesn't gain. It's not going to be so great for Eveltal. But at the same time, we can Thunderbolt. We kind of got our opponent pinned with the Xerneas here. Um, and we know if our Thunderous outspeeds the Rayquaza, we know that. Our Metagross at speeds the Rayquaza, so that's a big bit of information for us. So we can try and get a foul play into this Rayquaza now. Um, and if we can, we should be able to remove the Xerneas. The Xerneas does switch out though. The type of Finny gonna hit the field. Two Thunderbolts should get this Finny though. Um, just about if we can kind of withstand what the, 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 the Rayquaza chucks out at us. So there's a Thunderbolt. Yeah, one more of those will do the job. There's a Crunch into the Thunderous. Now, Dark Aura Boosted probably will take us down. Yeah, but we'll get a foul play into this Requires and Man. We're setting ourselves up pretty nicely to, to close this game out. Yeah, um, and Metagross coming in. So, Ice Punch the Requires will be able to get. It's just the Finny. What is that going to be able to do? If it Icy wins, it does put itself in a, a little bit of a better position. Um, and one of the things we could potentially do is just um, Ice Punch the ray and tailwind do we want a tailwind it's just to kind of get around the icy wind that's what i'm thinking um at this point that's probably my opponent's best way to get around everything strong winds will weaken the ice punch but we still should have enough to pick up the knockout here um and if we do see an icy wind then it puts us in a decent position going into this next turn um because the one, the drop that we'll get still puts us a little bit faster than the Xerneas. There's the Icy Wind, yeah. With both Pokemon. But, yeah, Eveltal's on its last legs, for sure. Now, I'd imagine the Xerneas to come in, protect, and another Icy Wind fired off, but then that still just resets. So, we can we can afford to go, I think, uh, Iron Head into the Xerneas and probably protect Eveltal here. Um... Because even another Icy Wind, my opponent needs two Icy Winds to really get the get the jump on Metagross. Um, so we will just go for an Iron Head into the Xerneas here. Um, hmm, do we just Snarl or do we, do we Foul Play the Finny just to put it in range? Hmm. 
I think foul play. It shouldn't proc the berry and then put it in Iron Hand Rage. I think that would probably be the better thing to do rather than protect Yveltal, which we could do, preserve it for another turn. Um, but I, I think at this point we've got our opponent pinned, so we should be able to, to close this one out. And they've accepted that, and very good game, and a nice way for us to kick off today. And a bit of an unorthodox kind of selection for us to kind of go into that first one. But like I said at the start, going into that battle, it did make a lot of sense for us to pick those Pokemon. And it turned out that they they did make the most sense and they did the job for us so a lot of the time. Um, sometimes it doesn't work out like that, but sometimes when you can like theory that sort of thing, it does come into it. So it's good just taking a little bit of time before clicking in to select the, the right Pokemon for yourself. But we'll skip over to our, our rating screen. And we'll get back on the hunt for our next opponent, and hopefully it doesn't take too long. But uh, that's a nice one for us to kick off with today, and it would be really nice for us to finish with a victory in our, our next one. Just to say, ta-da, a nice send-off for this team that we're playing at the minute. Because, like I've been saying and repeating, and it's probably getting like a broken record, but I do like this core a lot. Um, but I do, at the same time, want to have a bit more fun with this this Eveldon kind of call before we finish up with it and go on to something else next week. Um, we'll stick with Trainer version 1 because we very rarely have that unless I forget to set the music and then we, we do have it. But uh, it's always a nice one to have, reminiscent of tournament settings as well. And um, it's a little bit sad I don't have any tournaments for the rest of the season now. I'm just a, a spectator, but I'll be doing lots of content on the channel. Kind of, I think... That's one of the pluses where, like, I'm not playing for Worlds this year because of, of Thea coming along and stuff like that. So it does mean that I can concentrate a little bit more on content. So it's it's good for you guys, I guess, as well, that do enjoy this. But we've got our next opponent, so we'll jump straight into Team Preview, my friends. Okay, the next team that we're facing today is Tapu Lele, Incineroar, Groudon, Mewtwo, Crobat, and Bronzong. So we've got Mewtwo, Groudon here. We've got a bit of a Psychic Spam team, which is uh, straight away screams to me like we're going to see Gravity Hypnosis, uh, Gravity on the Scarf Tapu Lele, Hypnosis on the Crobat for sure. Uh, the Gravity would also support the Groudon. And then you've got the Trick Room switch there. The Mewtwo obviously thrives under a Psychic Terrain as well. So we need to be very careful of that. Eveltal does extremely well here, but I mean, one thing that we have to be a bit careful of is the uh, the fact that Eveltal isn't on the floor. Um, but if we do see Gravity, it does help us out quite a lot, doesn't it? Um, okay. Do we just bite the bullet? I mean, I mean, one thing we could do is go Thunderous here. I just, I just, I would prefer Eveltal over everything else. I don't want to lead. Uh, Tapu Fini because I want Tapu Fini to be a switch in. I think Metagross isn't bad here as well. Um, but him on top with with Wide Guard could be extremely useful. So I think, although the the Psychic Spam is is pretty nasty here, I think I'd probably go Tapu Fini, Groudon, him on top, Yveltal, um, and go that route with everything, and we'll click in. And we'll get into this first one today. Well, the second one, the second one, because it's the second game, isn't it? Brain. Brain. Brain fog. Next week is not going to be an excuse. Next week I should have caught up with sleep. I have to start a new job next week, which is like another thing. I was meant to start this week, but I put it back a week because I think with everything that went on, pregnancy and everything there, just into life and stuff like that, it probably would have been a little bit too much for me. So <laughs> it's good as well. It means I can get caught up with this sort of stuff. Relax at home, get used to everything, and then and then start a new job next week, which will be very exciting. Got a little bit more of a commute though now, so I'll be cycling to work. Should set up my phone so I can video video conference chat to you guys on my way to work in the mornings. Right, we're gonna see Tapu Lele and Mewtwo lead for my opponent. Um, so we've got a pretty nice switch into Tapu Fini here, and and just a, a, a Tailwind or a Snarl here to give us a speed advantage going into the next turn. I think I will just Tailwind here and switch into Tapu Fini with him on top. We'll probably see the Mewtwo uh, Mega Revolve. And one of the things we need to watch out for is the um, Miracle Eye Psychic attack into Evelto. Because that is something that players have been doing recently. And uh, I've never actually come across it yet on Battle Spot. But it is something to just be a little aware of. But I think with the Misty Seed boost uh, here on our side of the field, we should be alright. Um, 
So we'll see him on top. As we said, we are going to switch it out, bring Tepafini and get rid of the Psychic Terrain, which is like one of the big things uh, that my opponent will want to try and get back um, later in this match. But Ivalto in this matchup does extremely well, aside from the Miracle Eye. But we'll see what my opponent goes for here as the Mewtwo is going to reveal that it is Mega Mewtwo Y bursting out of its pod and becoming that crazy strong Mega Mewtwo variation here. We are going to just see a Moonblast into Ivalto. This will do a decent chunk of damage, but because of the Misty C, we do take that a little bit better here. And we are going to see a Gravity now, which helps us out immensely if we do see any sort of Hypnosis spam coming in for the rest of this game. We do get the Tailwind up now, and uh, we do have the option to go for that Snarl Heal Pulse if we'd like to, which kind of puts Yveltal in such a perfect position going into the rest of this game. Um, we could go Light Screen as well, that is an option, because uh, Snarl has hiccups along the way but I feel like I'd probably be better going for the snarl and the heal pulse here just to keep us uh, alive and kicking rather than take another moon blast um, I'm not going to say that snarl is going to do this, the thing that I was going to say that snarl does do because if I say it it would miss the tapu lele we just don't want that to happen so we do hit thankfully um, tapu finny will still outspeed both of these pokemon so we should get the heal pulse off ooh doesn't actually outspeed Tapu Lele, so it's a good job we did go for the heal pulse uh, here because we are on. Oh, wow, we are lucky. I really thought that was going to take us down there. I really did. Um, but we get the heal pulse off, which is nice. Um, so we'll just go for another snarl, and we will go for another heal pulse. And now we should be in a, a fine position. Now, I didn't expect Tapu Lele and Mewtwo to add speed Tapu Fini in a tailwind. And this is maybe one thing that we look at for the team in future. You know, you want that Tapu Fini to be outspeeding both in tailwind. Um, and it wouldn't take much to do to actually feasibly do that. And I think it puts you in a much better position where you're not on tender hooks going into that turn thinking, oh, we need to survive that Aurora Sphere. But we managed to kind of get through it. The Snarl coming in quite useful there for us. Um, I thought the Aurora would definitely do a little bit more damage. We are going to see the Tapu Lele with retreat now. Groudon going to hit the field. Um, this is alright. This is fine because the Mewtwo is not really going to be doing too much to us. You know, my opponent's probably going to try and maneuver the Tapu Lele back onto the field at some point. But what I'm going to try and do next turn is get our Tapu Fini out of here. So we've got that terrain to switch back in to disrupt that Psychic Trim when it comes back on. We also get him on top onto the field. As well, it's got the the um, the Y God support that really helps us against the Groudon more than anything else because that's likely what's going to happen going into this next turn. Uh, as we do get a snarl off into the the Bronzong and the Groudon, we'll probably see a Trick Room set up as well from the the Groudon, but uh, from the Bronzong support that Groudon. But I mean, I don't mind that too much because if we can get rid of both of these targets before the trip room runs out then we're not in a bad position at all i'm just gonna actually protect mm, do i protect or do i actually go for a foul play into the groudon i just don't want to take unnecessary damage here and i think i'd rather utilize a turn with fake out the next turn and have a full full healthy velto rather than having a half health from the press of his blades and then have the y god support going into the next turn here and the hit on top's one of those Pokemon we can quite happily bring in. It's going to be able to soak up the damage from a Precipice Blades or a Fire Punch in this, this case. It's not likely we'll, we'll see that, but we are going to see the Bronzong switch straight out for that Tapu Lele here. Um, get the Psychic Terrain back up onto the field. And that does put a bit more pressure onto our hit on top going into this next turn uh, as we do protect our Yveltal. Maybe going for this Snarl there would have been a little bit better, but as we do see a Sword Stance come out from this Groudon. Not so great, not so great. Um, now Tailwind does pitter out. Hmm. Now we're not in the best of positions here because we can go for... I mean, I think we go foul play. And for sure, because the Groudon is not going to be... Hmm, it could be faster than Yveltal. I wouldn't have thought it would be. Um, I think we will go there. And I'm going to just switch back into Tapu Fini here. And get rid of the Psychic Terrain. Because the foul play should take down that Groudon. It's just whether or not 
he failed to allow speeds it. But in this sort of team where you're seeing a Groudon with a Bronze on, you've got to imagine that it's probably a Solar variation of Groudon. I think the thing that you've got to worry about is a Protect on the Groudon and the Moonblast, but we're not going to see that. We're just going to see the Moonblast here. So it's all about whether Eveltal can outspeed the Groudon or not, which, yeah, we do. And I mean, plus, plus two, plus one. Oh, it's not quite enough, but the Precipice Blades actually comes off. Oof. I mean, Luzi Velto. That's pretty bad for us. Gravity does turn to normal. Hmm. Okay. It's not the worst. We've got our own Groudon to come in. Um. The gravity's gone back to normal. But we can. I think we can eruption here. And we're going to be in a safe position. Probably Icy Wind as well. Because the Moonblast's not really going to be doing too much to us. Eruption will be enough to get both these targets, even after uh, a Moonblast. And what we could do is set up a light screen, maybe. Um, just for when the Mewtwo comes in. But I don't expect the Mewtwo to really be able to do too much damage. It's got Psy Shock, so it's not really causing us too many issues here. But at the end of the day, the light screen's probably going to do us more good than not. Uh, going into this, the, these latter turns of this game. Um, but we'll see what my opponent does. Yeah, Groudon is going to withdraw. We're going to see me too. Bronzong? Okay. Bronzong come out. Eruption, I'll take down both these now. Moonblast. I might be into the Lele, you know. Uh, the Finny, sorry. Yeah, makes more sense. That's fine. I think Groudon now can close this game up. Because we're going to have our Misty Terrain up on the field. And we know our Groudon's going to outspeed the opposing Groudon because of the... Um, the Veltal out speeding it there, and the Mewtwo is going to be prone to a fake out this next turn from from our hit on top. So I think we've got enough in the tank to kind of close this one out. So a little bit hairy for a minute, and um, I really thought the foul player would take down the Groudon. Maybe the Intimidate there wasn't the best thing from a hit on top, but at the time we didn't know that's what the Groudon was going to be going for. And I think he Veltal type of thing kind of showed. That it's, it's got enough to deal with that kind of psychic spam the team that kind of comes out. We've still got to be a bit wary about the Mewtwo, obviously. We get the Intimidate onto the Groudon and the Mewtwo here. But we can just fake out Eruption here. We might see a double protect. And this is where Faint would be really good on Hitmon top as well. A really nice option here. So we'll just go for that Eruption and we'll go for the fake out into the Mewtwo. Hopefully the Mewtwo decides not to protect here and try and deal with this Groudon. Um, and that would be the best case scenario for us. We're not going to see any fake outs. We do get the fake out into the Mewtwo here. Mewtwo does flinch and there's the Eruption. It will be enough to take down the opposing Groudon and the Mewtwo. So two nice wins for us today to say goodbye to this team and that is brilliant because like I said at the start of the episode I'm going to switch things up tomorrow we're going to have a little bit more fun with the Evaldon core and uh, see what we can do with it and introduce some nice things and if you've got any desperate desires that you would like to see played on Friday's episode let me know and uh, I'll make sure that we do feature them in Friday's episode I'll put my own twist on something fun tomorrow but if you've got um, options that you'd like to see played on Friday with this team Pokemon, certain Pokemon that you'd like to see do shout out, leave a comment down below and I will make sure to try and feature them if I can obviously if we've got a bunch of them I'll just pick the best ones, most interesting ones going into Friday's episode and we'll feature that before we say goodbye to Iveltel and Groudon at the end of the week before we get that new team so do keep your comments coming down below though about what cores you'd like to see restricted combinations or just general Pokemon you'd like to see featured next week and I will make sure to do my best to feature them going forward. But thank you so much for tuning in, guys. I hope you have a great rest of your day. And I will see you all for the next one very soon. So until then, take care and bye-bye.